Hi everyone, how are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss about dinosaurs. I found this in Dave Miller's article entitled, The Bell Tomb Engraving. Please check the description to know more, there are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of <laughs> the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The worldwide evidence that man and dinosaurs cohabited is prolific and indisputable. Yet, the evolutionary community stubbornly continues to deny that such evidence exists. The extreme bias manifested by such denials is self-evident, what logicians label cavalier dismissal. Rather than allowing the evidence to speak for itself, evolutionists are so committed to their theory that they simply dismiss any proof presented that contradicts their views, since they have already pre-decided that the evolutionary framework is true. They seem to be incapable of allowing themselves even for a moment to hypothesize theoretically that their theory might be wrong. They refuse even to contemplate the notion that any human being ever saw a living dinosaur, which they insist were extinct millions of years before humans evolved. Yet, consider, for example, the evidence provided by the Bell Tomb engravings. In far northern England, near the Scottish border, lies the village of Carlisle. A city with a turbulent history, the Romans built a wall through it, the Vikings invaded it, and the Scots and English fought over it for many years. Located in this English village is the medieval period Carlisle Cathedral, which was founded in 1122 AD by King Henry I. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. On February 11, 1478, Richard Bell was elected Bishop of the Carlisle Cathedral and served some 17 years before resigning on September 4, 1495. He died in 1496 at the age of 86 and, in keeping with British custom, was buried beneath the floor in the cathedral's choir. The tomb is now covered by a carpet to prevent any further effacing of the engravings caused by the human foot traffic of many centuries. The monumental slab is beautifully inlaid with brass, including the facade of the cathedral and outline relief above and to each side of a solid image of the bishop himself, coupled with a solid strip of brass beneath the bishop. This image is taken from Hutchinson's 1794 volume The History of the County of Cumberland, page 602b. The Latin words beneath the bishop, consisting of four hexameters and two lines, may be translated. This marble holds within the bones of Bishop Bell for a while prior of Durham, afterwards he remitted and cherished the bishopric here. Above all things he sought Christ, despising the world, demanding the rewards of the brothers. A narrow strip of brass, nine one-half feet long, that runs around the outer edge of the tomb cover slab, bears Latin words, translated. Here lies the Reverend Father Richard Bell, sometime Bishop of Carlisle, who departed from this life the 24th day, in the year of the Lord. Among all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, may he rest in perpetual peace. Amen. Interspersed among these Latin words are engravings of a human face, the Trinity, and some 18 animals, a veritable zoo. Look carefully at these most intriguing engravings. Observe that every single one of these animals is recognizable as known species. None are mythical or imaginary. But there is another engraving that depicts two animals in contact with each other, perhaps in a fighting posture, whose necks are seemingly intertwined. The creature on the left has what appear to be spikes on its tail, reminiscent of the stegosaurids like to a Jangosaurus or Kentrosaurus, minus the plates. The animal on the right most certainly appears dinosaur-like. 
In fact, it strongly resembles a sauropod, perhaps an Apatosaurus or Diplodocus. If this is, in fact, a dinosaur, it would add further weight to the fact that human beings were contemporaries of dinosaurs. That would also mean that the evolutionists are incorrect when they claim that dinosaurs went extinct 65 to 70 million years before humans evolved. It would mean that evolutionists are wrong when they insist that no human ever saw a living dinosaur, since the first dinosaur bones were not uncovered until the mid-19th century, at which time dinosaur skeletons began to be reconstructed. It would, in fact, mean that dinosaurs and humans cohabited the Earth, just like the Bible teaches. The present staff of the Carlisle Cathedral denies emphatically that a dinosaur adorns the brass strip of the bell tomb. They forthrightly insist, and want it clearly understood, that the cathedral does not subscribe to the dinosaur view. When a cathedral spokesperson was asked to offer her conjecture as to the identity of the creature, she responded. My nearest guess, for what it's worth, would be a not bad attempt to represent crocodiles. Yet, as it so happens, one additional animal is depicted on the brass strip, identified specifically by the cathedral as a crocodile. Whether the one is, in fact, a crocodile is debatable, since crocodile tails do not curve down and then back up like an S, and this creature is standing up from the ground, unlike a crocodile. Instead, this creature, too, appears dinosaur-like. And when placed in juxtaposition with the other two creatures, this animal does not resemble the images of the other two animals. Observe that both the size and length of their necks are significantly different, so, what are these latter three animals? If any are dinosaurs, carved in the 15th century, then what we have is proof that man and dinosaur lived on Earth together. Judge for yourselves. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.